Well, uh, hello and welcome everyone to another thrilling and interactive deep dive session on fine tuning for audio classification with transformers. Before we kick things off and I hand it over to our speaker, a quick recap of the guidelines for this session. Uh, please keep your chats relevant to the what is being asked by the speaker. Chats will be moderated at all times. Moderator reserve the right to take down any suspicious message from the chat. All your questions need to be posted in the Q&A section. Questions will be subject to moderation. If your question is already posted in the Q&A section, do not post it again. Just upload the question and the most upvoted question will be answered by the speaker. Also, we'll be posting some polls in some time. So just keep an eye on the poll section as well. With that, now on to our speaker for the session. We are delighted to be joined by Mr. Julian Simon. Chief Evangelist at Hugging Face. Julian has never ending curiosity for technology and for innovative ways to solve real world business challenges. He has recently spent six years at uh, Amazon Web Services where he was the global technical evangelist for AI and machine learning. Prior to joining AWS, Julian served for 10 years as CTO VP engineering at large scale startups. We have a short introductory clip on him. Without a further ado, let's play the clip. Welcome, Julian. Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on. Good afternoon, you are. yeah. Very happy to be here. Yeah, it's morning for me, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Happy so with be. this, you are all set to go. The virtual stage is all yours. Okay. Well, thanks again for inviting me, and thanks everybody for for attending. Um, we have a pretty long session today, so um that's great because we can dive pretty pretty deep in the topic and uh, we'll certainly have time for questions at the end so should we get started yes yes <laughs> yes I'll, let's just have a quick check on your screen sharing okay let's do that right now yeah. okay here we go okay hopefully you see my screen now yes yeah it works fine <laughs> Okay, well, I think we're ready then. So, yeah. um, um, very quick intro. So, obviously, I'm Julian. Uh, I work for Hugging Face, and um, I'll explain a little bit what Hugging Face is about. And I'm based outside Paris, although I do travel uh, again, which is fine. <laughs> and I really, really hope to be back in uh, in India and APAC as soon as I can. I always had a blast over there. So uh, uh, hopefully sorry, I can. Can you, uh, Julian, uh, can you yes. please just put your slides on the full screen mode? Yeah, yeah, of course, sure. Here we go. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. All right. So our topic today is going to be um, audio classification with transformers, which um, you know, which is a little bit different from um, what, one we, what we usually cover. We, you know, we talk a lot about natural language processing, but I thought, hey, this time. We can do audio, right? So before we do that, um, I want to uh, set the stage. I want to explain why transformers are um, important and, and disruptive. And to do that, of course, we need to understand how we were doing things before. So machine learning and deep learning have been around for, for a little while now. Deep learning is not completely new anymore. But the way we've been doing it from, let's say, 2015 up until, you know, now for a lot of people or a couple of years ago is really, you know, we, we start with neural networks. And neural networks is really not new technology, as we know, but it's been given a new life thanks to deep learning. So using models like convolutional neural networks or um, recurrent neural networks, and their variations, LSTMs, etc. cetera, um, we've been able to extract insights from complex data, unstructured data, like natural language or images or videos or audio. 
Um, but generally, this has meant um, it, writing neural networks from scratch or trying to work with existing networks. Um, and, you know, as we all know, that's not so easy. The next important step uh, in building a, a deep learning uh, powered application is, of course, to train your neural network on lots of data. And that's, that's a huge problem because most of the time, um, practitioners have been training from scratch. And as we know, deep learning is very data hungry and you need hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of, um, of uh, data instances to get to an accurate model. And that means collecting a lot of data, uh, cleaning a lot of data, labeling a lot of data whether it's text or images or audio, that's a lot of work. And you know, if you do this for a living, you know that actually building the data set is, is going to be, and curating the data set is going to be the most difficult part and the longest part of the project. And that kind of slows down everything. Uh, you can't really get started unless you have that data ready. The next step is of course to put the two together and train the, your neural network on your data set. And this really means using GPUs, right? And in fact, the, the explosion of deep learning is also due to the fact that GPU have become, um, uh, have become um, available uh, more widely than before. And, uh, and researchers have found a way to use them for uh, scientific computing and deep learning, and not just 3D games. And although there's nothing wrong with 3D games. Um, so GPUs have been uh, really powerful and really you know, helpful in getting those models there. And of course, um, to, to run the whole thing, to experiment and train and deploy, um, practitioners have used a collection of tools uh, and you know, early on, tools like uh, you know TensorFlow, Torch, and, and a few more have been there, and they're open source tools, which is great. But they're generally very difficult to use. Uh, you you really need to understand the finer details of the machine learning process. You need to understand the finer details of the neural network you're working with, and that means that unless you have, uh, I would say, a formal background, uh, a very strong background in computer science and statistics and machine learning, it's really, really difficult to get to um, uh, a good result. And that's a problem because we really want machine learning and deep learning to be a, a, a common tool that uh, any developer is able to use. But with those first few years of deep learning, uh, it's been really, really difficult and it's been really reserved for um, uh, people who knew exactly what they were doing. And well, again, we think that's a problem. So at Hogging Face, we're trying to reinvent um, and simplify the whole machine learning life cycle. And the first step is to, um, um, to work with transformer models. Uh, we'll talk about transformers uh, a little more, but uh, this, this transformer architecture was launched in 2017. I'm sure everybody here has heard about the BERT model from Google. Uh, which was kind of the first um, widely known transformer model, um, breaking old benchmarks on, uh, on natural language processing tasks. And transformers are still deep learning models, but they have a very specific architecture that's proven extremely efficient, not just for NLP, but also for computer vision and audio and, and other tasks right now. And they're really becoming the, the new standard, you could say, the, the de facto solution for, um, for machine learning and deep learning. So we'll look, of course, at transformers in detail later. The next uh, evolution is uh, moving away from labeling huge data sets to uh, using pre-trained models and transfer learning. And that's one of the really good things about transformers is they can be initially trained by experts uh, and, and you know large organizations on huge data sets, think uh, Wikipedia. And those models can be shared 
and either used as is for a certain number of tasks, uh, let's say translation or uh, summarization, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, text generation, and sometimes they're just good. They're just good enough uh, to be used that way, uh, and and they can also be um, fine-tuned. Uh, it's it's a, a simple and reasonably inexpensive process to specialize them on your own data for a particular task. So you could start from an off-the-shelf model for uh, English summarization, and you could fine-tune that model at a very uh, low cost uh, on, let's say, uh, medical documents, right, to make it even more efficient um, on that particular domain. So that's really a, a huge difference here because instead of building those huge data sets, now you only need to build um, a small fine-tuning set, which is one or two orders of magnitude smaller than the original training set uh, you would have to build, right? So that's a really strong benefit and we'll use uh, transfer learning today, of course. The next evolution is uh, the, uh, the emergence of specialized chips that have been um, built from the ground up to accelerate machine learning workflows, whether it's training or inference. And of course, GPUs are still around and they're, you know, they're still very interesting, uh, but there's, a, there's more choice now. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about that a little more in a few minutes. And finally, um, we're, we're trying to build tools that are accessible to every developer out there. And that's why I, you know, I, I really wanna call them developer tools, not expert tools. Because the, uh, we're, we're trying to abstract away as much complexity as we can and, and make it unnecessary to understand every tiny detail about your model or about your, um, uh, your underlying framework. And that's what the Transformers library and, and the other open source libraries by Hugging Face uh, really are. They're really a, a, a simple API that make it easy to uh, experiment and train and deploy models with uh, a little code and simple code. And hopefully I'll, uh, I'll show you that and I'll convince you of that during the demo. So zooming in a little bit, um, uh, the Transformers library, which of course is named after the Transformer models, uh, is a, a library created by Hugging Face uh, a few years ago and it's uh, uh, Hugging Face is of course the, the steward for this library and, and a few others. Um, with the help of the community. Um, and it's amazing to see that in just a few years, uh, Transformers has become one of the fastest growing open source software projects ever. And uh, you can see on this, uh, on this graph, the number of GitHub stars uh, for different projects. So Hugging Face Transformers are the, uh, the yellow line on the left uh, with the, the steepest slope showing the, you know, the fastest growth and you know, don't get me wrong. We're uh, you know we have lots of respect, and and you know we love all the other projects, and of course we use those projects like PyTorch and Keras, etc. And it's amazing to see you know our popularity is is growing faster than those. And what's even more impressive, I think, is that uh, we're growing faster than Kubernetes, which you know is a project that literally everyone uses. So we're really thankful for uh, you know this adoption and the support of the community. And uh, um, another interesting number is the, the number of models that we serve every day from the Hugging Face Hub, which is the website where we host models and data sets. And you'll see that in a minute. And we serve over 1 million models every day. So the adoption, the continued uh, use of the libraries and the models in, in the community and in the industry is extremely strong. And by the way, if you haven't given a star <laughs> to the Transformers library, you know, I would really appreciate it if you did. Uh, you could just go to that GitHub URL and just star it. Uh, you know, we're trying to get to 100K stars uh, as quickly as we can. So your help will be appreciated. Um, we also see this adoption um, translating into, I would say, industry visibility and industry recognition. Um, the state of AI report um, called out, you know, transformers as a general purpose architecture for ML. So even though NLP was the starting point, as mentioned before, transformers are now really um, um, 
um, fit for you know, computer vision and audio and speech and reinforcement learning and, and other things. They're really, really generalizing to a lot of problems. And the Kaggle uh, data science survey uh, kind of confirmed that uh, and showing that um, uh, CNN and RNN usage was, uh, was going down and transformers usage was going up. So there's really a shift from, I would say, traditional deep learning architectures to transformer-based architectures. So that's, that's really great to hear and read. Um, so, uh, you know, I want to focus more, mostly on the demo today and, and answering questions at the end, of course. Um, so here's the kind of the family picture of Hugging Face, and you can learn more about all of these um, <laughs> during the demo, of course, and on our website, uh, huggingface.co. So starting on the right, uh, of course, we have uh, the Hugging Face Hub, where we host models and data sets. Uh, I think actually we've, we've hit 6,000 data sets, but we'll, we'll check when, once we go to the hub. And we have over 55,000 models, uh, which are uh, uploaded by the community, and, and some of them are maintained by Hugging Face directly. So chances are you're going to find a, um, either a model that works out of the box for you or a model that you can use as a starting point for your project. And then, of course, using the Transformers library, uh, which is open source, you can train and you know, experiment on, uh, on your laptop, on, on your own server, um, in the cloud, anywhere. That's fine. Uh, if you're interested in AutoML, we have a, a solution called AutoTrain, uh, which is uh, completely no code. Uh, just a few clicks in the in the UI will let you um, train and optimize models. Um, we also have a, another open source library called Optimum, uh, which is dedicated to hardware acceleration, uh, whether it's training or inference. And I'll zoom in on the Optimum in a minute. And so with these different tools, you can go and train uh, models very easily with very little code. And once you have a model that you like, you can uh, deploy it to Spaces, uh, and Spaces is a really simple way to build uh, web applications using uh, simple web frameworks in order to showcase your models and uh, demo them to non-technical people, right? Or just the community in general. And of course, we'll look at Spaces today. And finally, when it comes to deployment, you can deploy your models on the Inference API uh, in literally one line of code, which I'll show you again today. And uh, you can also use Optimum again to accelerate inference. Uh, on top of that, um, we have cloud-based um, solutions. We have a partnership with AWS where uh, Hugging Face is uh, deeply integrated into Amazon SageMaker. We have training and inference containers uh, readily available on SageMaker. And we have uh, deep integration with all the the SageMaker features generally. So if you use AWS and SageMaker, make sure you, you read about Hugging Face on SageMaker. And uh, more recently, we launched uh, another solution on uh, Microsoft Azure called Hugging Face Endpoints, where you can go to the, Hugging, uh, to the Azure marketplace and, uh, and you'll find Hugging Face there. And in just a few clicks, you can deploy any public NLP model from the hub to a managed instance on Azure and predict with it in just one line of code. So, uh, you know, more options uh, for, for everybody, whether you want to, you know, work on your own machine or in the cloud, uh, you know, we think we have you covered. And of course, we'll keep uh, building more. One last thing before we, we dive into the demo, I want to zoom in on, a, I think, what I think is a very important topic, uh, hardware acceleration. And uh, so hardware acceleration is, um, um, is important for transformers because uh, transformers are large models and, um, and they can be, you know, they can take some time to train and some time to, to predict with. So that's why we've built Optimum um, and uh, you can find it again on, on, uh, on GitHub. Uh, and Optimum is, the, um, is based on our collaboration with uh, hardware vendors. Uh, so companies like uh, Habana Labs or Graphcore to accelerate training uh, or, or the ONNX org and, uh, and Intel to accelerate inference. And so with very minimal changes to your existing code, you can go and switch from, let's say, GPU training to Habana training 
and or you can uh, use ONNX optimization and Intel optimization. So these are really interesting. These are very simple to use and you can really out of the box get great results without having to crack the model open and, and do you know, deep optimization, which is extremely difficult. Uh, another um, way to accelerate inference, which is not part of Optimum, but still very interesting, is our work uh, with AWS on Inferentia, which is a custom chip to accelerate inference. And, um, and the, the Neuron SDK, which is the uh, AWS SDK to uh, compile and optimize models uh, does support transformers. So again, if you use AWS, that's, that's a good option. Okay, I think it's time to, uh, uh, to jump to the demo. So uh, this is where you'll find the, the demo. It's on, it's on GitLab. There are a few demos in there, um, but the one I'm going to cover today is called uh, Keyword Spotting. So let's jump into that notebook. Let's get out of the slides. Okay. All right. So I guess first we can take, um, let's take a, a quick look at the Hugging Face Hub. So uh, let me zoom in maybe a little bit. Yeah, looks, looks better. Um, so you'll find uh, the hub at huggingface.co. Uh, you can sign up in, in seconds. Um, and, you know, I would encourage you to to go and do that. Uh, this will give you access to all the features. Oh, it's completely free. I should mention that. <laughs> so uh, there's no reason not to do it. And, uh, and as we can see on the hub, uh, we do find over 56,000 models for a variety of tasks, uh, which you can see here. So of course, lots of NLP, um, but you know, not just NLP, we have computer vision, we have audio, uh, we have some uh, multimodal models, uh, we have uh, tabular data, we have reinforcement learning, and you know, I'm pretty sure we'll keep adding stuff to that. Uh, and we'll look at some models uh, in, in more detail. And of course, we have data sets. Oh, oh my God, it's even 7,000 now. Okay, so it's growing faster. It, you know, I cannot keep that slide up to date. Uh, it's, it's growing too fast. And, and again, we have data sets uh, that you can just go and grab uh, for whatever task you're interested in. And uh, as you will see, it's very easy to download those data sets and work with them and you know they're off the shelf so you don't need to go and build those large data sets you can get started very quickly uh, from those uh, those existing data sets out there okay so the problem we want to solve today is um, audio classification so we should explain um, what audio classification is right um, and the best way to do this is maybe to look at a few models. So let's say I'm interested in audio classification models for English, because that's what I'm going to use today. Okay. And I can see, I can see some models. So let's just grab this one and see what this does. Okay. Um, so this one says, hey, the model expect a raw audio signal, uh, and it's about speech emotion. Okay, interesting. So I think we're all familiar with text classification, right? Uh, there are many examples of text classification, like maybe sentiment analysis, uh, you know, positive, neutral, uh, negative, or just classifying text according to, I don't know, you know, uh, classifying news articles according to the, the, the main topic, uh, you know, it's, it's a very common, it's a very common problem. Okay. And it's, it's, you know, it's well understood. Uh, well, audio classification is, is the same, um, except, except instead of using natural language, uh, you know, a piece of text, we're going to use a piece of audio, okay? Um, and, and that's, of course, that's a little bit different, okay? So we have some existing models that we can, uh, that we can start from. Uh, we have emotion recognition, and, you know, it's, we, could, we could go and experiment with all of these, Okay, and uh, we can actually test those models uh, right there uh, if we wanted. So why don't we try that? Uh, okay, emotion detection. So hopefully, you know, it's going to say happy or or something like that. Okay, let's go and try this one. 
Hey, good morning, everybody. Super happy to be here. All right, all right. That's a that's a random life test. You never know what's coming out. <laughs> Should be fun. Let's see. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. Well, oh, should have tried it. Oh, that's that's too bad. Okay, let's try another one. Um, hmm, which wood could we try? Um, uh, can we try this one? Okay. All right. That's another one for emotion detection. Let's give it a try. Hey, good morning, everybody. Very happy to be here. Ah. Oh. So this is called the inference widget, by the way, and this is available for um, for almost all models on the hub. And um, so you can, as you can see, you can uh, test uh, the models right there. The model gets loaded, um, and you have um, a, a prediction in place. Um, so I hope this one works. Okay, this one works. Um, so yeah, this is mostly happy. <laughs> this is mostly happy. Yeah probably should be trained a little bit more this one but as you, just a random example right so this shows that you can go and try out uh, all those different models right and and find something that is a good starting point uh, but in fact what I want to do today um, is a certain type of audio classification uh, I want to um, do uh, I want to uh, perform a task called keyword spotting and keyword spotting is basically a task where um, uh, I want the model to pick up uh, a particular keyword from a certain list. Um, so e applications for this are, uh, you know, things like, uh, you know, uh, the Google, uh, Google uh, uh, Assistance or Amazon Assistance, you know, when you say Alexa or, or something like that, you know, that's the particular keyword you want to, to pick up. Or you know, generally any voice-based uh, uh, system like you know in-car systems, um, they're looking for particular keywords. You know, call home or uh, um, or go to this location, etc. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to try and do keyword spotting and see how uh, accurate we can uh, we can do this. Okay. Um, and obviously, the first step is to have um, a, a model that understands speech. So we have a lot of, uh, of speech-to-text models on the hub, and we can take a look here. Um, yeah, automatic speech recognition. And uh, there's a really interesting family of models that has been released by Facebook. Uh, it's the WEF2, VEC2 architecture. And, uh, and we can grab maybe, yeah, let's grab this one here. And these one are uh, basically speech-to-text models that have been trained on, as you can see, you know, 960 hours of, uh, of speech, okay, in this li uh, Libris speech data set. And that's, that's a good way to start, right? So we can say, okay, let's try this. Um, let's try this model and see how good it is from a, a speech to text perspective. Because again, that's gonna be the first step in classifying keywords. First is, you know, what did I say? So let's give it a try. And here we can even try real-time speech recognition, which is fun. Let's go and try that. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm really happy to be talking about machine learning today. All right, that's not too bad. Okay, so again, you can see how easily you can try those models without writing any line of code uh, and you can try them in, in different languages. Of course, I'm, I'm using English here. So we could say, okay, that's, that's an interesting model. And in fact, um, a, few, a few weeks ago, uh, there was um, an evolution of this model, uh, which is, uh, no, sorry, this one's mine, uh, which is called the conformer model. So let me show you this one. Because that's the one we're going to be, yes, this one here. That's the one we're going to be using. So it's uh, it's a recent edition, and if you're interested, you can uh, you can read about it in the in the Facebook paper. Uh, but in a nutshell, and don't worry, I'm not going to go deep here. Uh, in a nutshell, um, the conformer 
is, is a very interesting model because it's a combination of convolution and transformers. And uh, it's really bringing the best of, uh, of both worlds where we, we use transformers and their ability to understand very long sequences, very long-term dependencies. And we use convolution and their ability to understand very local um, uh, relationships. Um, and I think that's a good pick for keywords because if you think about it, um, a keyword is very short. Okay, so it's not a super long piece of speech or a super long piece of text. Okay, it's it's the keywords I'm going to work with are one seconds, um, and I really want to see those uh, keywords as uh, you know digital audio. So of course they're going to be sampled. We're going to use this sample audio as a sequence, as we'll see in a minute. Um, so it's still a, a long sequence of digital samples, but it's just one word. So, um, you know, there's an element of understanding both the relationship between all the, uh, uh, the samples in the sequence and the, and the close relationship between uh, of the waveform, right? Um, and so I think convolution and, uh, and transformers should work well there. So that's my intuition. Uh, that's why I decided to go with this model and, and now we can try and, and see it in action, okay? So let's jump to, uh, to this notebook. Uh, and interestingly, um, this is a notebook that was originally uh, written by one of my colleagues. And again, it, it's all on GitLab, so you, 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 can, you can find that. Um, and uh, so this was written by Anton, and Anton uh, initially used a different model. He initially used one of the original Wave 2 Vec2 models. And, you know, when I was looking for, uh, you know, to, to, to try this new conformer model, I thought, okay, I, I'm going to have to write a completely new notebook for it. And, and in fact, you know, uh, I, I, I didn't have to do that. Um, I, I basically took this notebook, tweaked a few things, um, used a new conformer model instead of the, the original wave 2 vec 2 model and it worked out of the box and I think this also shows that um, the, this API that we're going to see in the notebook is really very flexible and, and generic in, in a good way um, the, the code that you write with the transformers library is, um, is extremely reusable it's not task dependent uh, you'll see the, the training loop that we write can actually be used for uh, almost any kind of task, whether it's natural language or audio or speech. So, uh, yeah, that was a good, uh, a good surprise that I didn't have to rewrite all this notebook. Okay, so uh, let me maybe zoom in a bit more and we can get started. So this is the, the, the name of the model I'm starting from, okay, uh, the one we saw here. Okay, and this one has been, uh, been pre-trained again on those 960 hours of uh, Libre Speech. Okay, so I'm going to start, and which is, uh, which is English, uh, English language. So I'm going to start from that. Okay, uh, next step, of course, is to install uh, the, the open source libraries that I need. So uh, I'm going to need the Transformers library, I'm going to need the Datasets library, and uh, I'm going to need uh, Librosa, which is a, a, a nice library to load and process audio samples, okay? Um, then I can log in to the Hugging Face Hub. Uh, that's not strictly necessary, but if I want to uh, uh, push maybe my model to the hub automatically once I've uh, trained it, I need to do that. Uh, so I could log in, uh, you know, using the command line interface or I can log in directly in the notebook, okay? And now we can get started. So. Um, we have a model, which is nice, um, but now we need a data set. So, of course, I could go and build my data set. I could say, okay, here's the list of keywords I want to classify. Um, so I should go and record, you know, thousands and thousands of samples uh, and, uh, and, you know, and, and, and store them and, and process them, etc. But, in fact, here I'm, I'm using... Uh, an existing, uh, let me get to, to this uh, data set. I'm using an existing data set, uh, which is called uh, speech commands. Um, here it is. Okay, uh, this is the one I'm using, V002. 
And speech commands is actually uh, a data set that contains um, uh, predefined files for, um, I think it's 30, is it 35, I think, or 36 different keywords, okay? And, um, and that's a great, great way to start. Um, and keywords include um, words like, I think we have them here, let me, let me show you the list. Uh, where is that list? Yeah, here we are. Uh, yeah, so we have simple words like very short words like yes, no, up, down, left, right, um, on, off, etc. And, and a few, a few longer ones. Okay, 36 classes. Okay, so that's what we have in this data set, and um, and of course we can uh, work with this directly. Uh, we could add our own, uh, and I'll show you at the end how you could uh, extend this data set uh, and why we would want to do that. Okay. So loading the data set is super simple. Um, we just need to run this load data set API and that's going to download the speech data set, uh, the speech commands data set from the hub to, uh, to my local machine. And I can see I've got almost 85,000 uh, 85, um, instances in there. Uh, so again, we can see the labels. Okay. Um, and we can look at a particular, uh, a particular sample. So a particular sample is basically just a WAV file. Um, that's part of the data set. And uh, we load, when we load a sample, we convert it automatically to, uh, to an array of uh, uh, digitized uh, audio. Okay? And we need to have a sampling rate of 16 kilohertz because this is what the model has been trained on. So we need to match that. Okay, so if you add your own samples, you need to pay attention to that. Okay, uh, we, can, uh, we can try and listen to some samples. So we can just, uh, you know, try and load a few of those. Uh, let me, hopefully you should hear that. Learn. Okay. Left. Six. Pause. All right, so, yeah, last one. Two. Okay, so you can see, you know, short keywords, um, different speakers, different voices, which is of course important. You know, I wouldn't want the model to understand just my own voice. That would be completely stupid and useless. So uh, there's a, there's some diversity there. Okay, so that's uh, that's what we have, and um, and we can now move on and uh, and process the data in a way. Um, it's not going to be heavily processed. Uh, we have um, um, a built-in feature extractor uh, that comes with the model. Um, what this one does is really, um, it's going to uh, cap uh, or, or I should say tr uh, truncate uh, the, the samples, okay? We need to have a fixed uh, length. So looking or listening <laughs> Uh, to those samples, um, uh, most of them are um, uh, under one second. So we'll just set the max duration to one second. And, uh, and so we'll process accordingly, okay? So uh, we write a simple function that just iterates over each of those audio uh, clips and um, sets the, the max length to one second and, uh, and truncates them if needed, okay? Because again, uh, we need a fixed input size, input length. Okay. All right. So we write this uh, this simple function and uh, we apply it to the training set and the validation set. Okay. The the, the data sets library has this very um, uh, useful map API, where you can just apply a function to every sample. And uh, in in one operation. So that's super convenient. And okay, now we have um, um, our 84 something thousand samples ready and, and truncated and, uh, and good to go. Okay, so there's not a lot of, uh, of processing to do here. As you can see, we're really just taking that, uh, uh, that wave uh, form and, uh, and making sure it's one second uh, maximum. Okay, and that's the sequence, obviously, <laughs> we can see them here. Now that's the sequence of, uh, of values that we're going to train the transformers on, okay. 
All right, so simple enough, not a lot of processing here. Uh, and uh, now we can, uh, we can look at the training code, okay? So the training code is, uh, is super simple because it's really uh, abstracted away by the, the Transformers library. Uh, and uh, here I'm using the high-level trainer API, which is my favorite way of training models because, again, it's very simple, it's very generic. Uh, and the first step is to uh, load the, the base model, okay? So that uh, uh, Facebook Wave 2 Vec 2 model that we uh, saw earlier. And I can do that in one line of code, just call the uh, uh, API called auto model for audio classification, pass the model name uh, on the hub, uh, the number of labels, okay? So how many classes do we have in this data set? And I, this comes from here, uh, 36. And uh, for convenience and readability, we can pass mappings from label to class names and uh, from class names to labels. And this is just a simple dictionary that tells me, uh, you know, class uh, class zero is uh, yeah, class zero is yes, and class one is no, and you know, accordingly, uh, yes is class zero and no is class one, right? So when we predict, this lets me easily decode. Um, class I names and class IDs, right? So, simple. And, yeah, that's about it. Okay, so now we have a model, okay? And you can see it's one line to download it, and um, it's not complicated. No worries here, okay? And next, I need to set some training parameters, and um, this is all uh, done in the training arguments object. Um, and here, you know, we set quite a few, but, you know, you could absolutely, on your first try, you could absolutely work with the uh, reasonable defaults and, uh, and, you know, simplify this. So here we're passing uh, the name of the model. Uh, we're passing the name of uh, the model we want to create on the hub. Okay, so once we've trained this model, we want to automatically push it to the hub. Uh, right, push to hub equal true, and this is where it should be pushed. Okay, so this will be the fine tuned model. Um, the learning rate and the batch size, and uh, you know, how many epochs I want to train on, and, and a few more things. Okay, but again, uh, the and of course, the, the metric that we want to run here, which is accuracy. Right, uh, again, you could stick with defaults for a lot of those, and, and if you're curious about all those parameters, you can go and and check out the documentation. But the, the important ones are really, uh, yeah, I guess the number of epochs uh, and, uh, and whether you want to push the model to the hub or not, okay? All right, um, I need to provide a, a function to compute the metrics, okay? And this will be reported uh, after each epoch, of course. Um, and here I want to stick with something simple. Uh, it's, it's a classification problem. So let's just go with uh, accuracy, okay? And so I just, uh, I just write a function that takes the, the predictions and uh, computes, uh, compares the predictions to the labels and returns the appropriate metric. Okay, and you can see this is really a it's a generic metrics function for classification. You could just and you could just copy paste this and reuse it with a text classification or uh, or image classification. It would it will work the same, right? So that's cool. You don't want to rewrite everything all the time. And finally, I'm putting everything together in the trainer object, passing uh, the model, the training arguments, the training set. Uh, that we uh, process the same thing for the evaluation set, uh, the feature extractor that we downloaded, and the metrics function, right? And then we simply call train, okay? So you can see what I was referring to earlier. Um, we, this isn't really machine learning code, right? We're not going deep into the model. We're not going deep into PyTorch. Uh, we're not uh, we're not even writing the training loop, right? We're just providing uh, arguments, a metrics function, and a trainer object, and all the complexity uh, of the training process and the optimization process is hidden inside of the objects, 
So of course, if you if you really you know if you really know what you're doing and you want to work one level down, uh, you could uh, load that Facebook model as a PyTorch model and um, and you know just customize everything in, with PyTorch code, and lots of users do that. But when you experiment and you just want to go you know quick or or you don't you know you don't necessarily want to tweak everything, this uh, this trainer API is is really great I think, okay. So I ran this training job before uh, because it did last for a few hours. <laughs> so um, it's it's uh, you know it's a reasonably large training job that we've done here. We'll look at the results, uh, but you would just call train and you know off it goes, and then you can you can once the training job is complete, you can call push to hub, and it will automatically push your model to the hub as well as lots of information, right? But as you can see, the code itself. Uh, for for training is is really not difficult at all and again very flexible very generic okay so fast forward a few hours uh, you know what do we get so once the training is complete and once I've pushed uh, the model to the hub um, I have this new model uh, stored in my uh, in my user account and you know automatically all the files have been pushed there and we can see this is in fact a git repository uh, because all models and data sets on the hub are stored as git uh, in git repos okay and so uh, that means that not only can i easily download them using the transformers library of course i could use uh, a simple git workflow to clone the repo to my local machine and, and experiment okay so that's pretty convenient uh, on top of that, um, the, the Transformers library created all this information. I did add a few more specifics, like the code samples, but um, the, the basic information and, uh, and uh, the training parameters and the training results, which we see here, have been automatically pushed to um, to this repo and we call this the model card and that's super important because as you can see it gives you a lot of useful information on the model and you can you can you know when you're looking for models on the hub if you have a, re a well written model card and I'm hoping this one is uh, one of those uh, you can you can quickly understand what this is and whether it's a good fit for you right so we can see the the, the different epochs and the different metrics and I can see, uh, yeah, the best model actually hit 97.24% uh, accuracy, which I think is very, very good. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's state of the art, to be honest, but it's got to be pretty close. Um, and, um, and yeah, I think that's pretty impressive for uh, 36 classes um, to get to 97 plus out of the box, right? And we'll also see framework versions, okay? And so I trained this one on uh, on SageMaker. Um, I did use a pretty large instance uh, with eight GPUs because, you know, um, this uh, this is a big training job, and this lasted for about f a little more than four hours actually, okay? And total cost, um, I think this instance is somewhere near probably thirty dollars per hour. Um, and I did I did not use spot I think on this one I think I used an on-demand instance so I did pay the full price so so that job would probably cost let's say hundred and fifty dollars or something like that okay and you could say well that's a lot but I mean for a business app it's it's not it's not right it's a, a high accuracy model like that four hundred and fifty dollars is uh, I think is a good deal Okay, so now we have this model. Um, we can see some additional information. Uh, we can see automatically that this was fine-tuned on the speech commands data set. That's, that information has been added automatically. Um, and if we wanted to edit the model card, uh, of course we could do it here. It's a markdown file in the repository. Okay, and that's where I added the, the code samples. Okay. So very cool uh, labels that tell me, yeah, this is a wave two vector conformer model. This is audio classification, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, so now we want to uh, we want to test the model, right? We want to see how well it's doing. 
So let's go and do that. Let's switch to this other notebook. So of course, you know, we could have uh, used some samples from the uh, from the, uh, the the training set, but I thought no, 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 I'm, I want to do real life samples. So I did <laughs> record a few uh, WAV files, okay, uh, and you can you can try your own if you want. Um, these are 16k, uh, 16 kilohertz uh, mono WAV files, right? So that's that's what you need to have, and uh, and let's listen to this one, Marvin. Okay, yeah, so that's Marvin. Um, we can uh, look at the WAV file, okay, see, you know, and that's interesting because we could see, yeah, okay, it's under a second, right? It's got some uh, white space here, but generally it's under one second, so, you know, it should, it should work, okay? So that's, that's an interesting uh, uh, feature of uh, Librosa to display those files, okay? And now we can uh, we can predict with the model, okay? And the absolute simplest way to do this is to use the pipeline API. Um, and uh, how you use it? Well, is just like that. Uh, create a pipeline for audio classification, pass the name of the model, which is the model I push to the hub, okay? And this creates a pipeline object. And then I can just go and pass my uh, my file to it. I can either pass the the wave file directly or the the loaded file right and let's go and try and predict this and hopefully it'll say the same okay and this is running on my local machine so it's a, it's a cpu machine so uh, it's uh, it's a little slow right okay and so this tells me this clip is marvin with uh 52 plus percent confidence okay which which is interesting okay let's try another one uh which which one should we try all right, let's try happy. Happy. Okay, I don't sound too happy saying it, but okay. So that's oh, that's a that's a very short one, and interestingly, uh, it's more than one second, right? So that will be truncated, and you know probably, um, um, you know, you would. It, if you were preparing this for, you know, real life training, you would probably remove, you know, you would probably trim that uh, initial white space to make sure the sample is centered at one second. Uh, but yeah, this one is a little too long, so let's see where it goes. Okay, well, it still figures it out, right? 54%. Pretty sure if I... Uh, if I trim this, you know, <laughs> and let it pro uh, predict everything, you know, it would uh, it would be a higher score. But 54 is is good enough. Okay, so another way to predict is to uh, if you want more control, if you need to do more processing, uh, you know, if you want to see generally a little more, uh, you can wor work with the auto, what I call the auto API, uh, where uh, we load the model just like we loaded it for training. So again, auto model for audio classification. Uh, load the sample, make sure it's 16 kilohertz. Um, extra, use the, the feature extractor to, uh, to, again, truncate it at one second, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And okay, so that's, we can see our input uh, here and we pass the input to uh, the model, okay, for prediction. And this is the output uh, tensor and so we see 36 values because we have 36 classes and these are uh, raw um, activation values so they don't look like probabilities at all okay uh, they're just you know absolute uh, values and so if I apply the uh, softmax functions to that um, if softmax is a simple functions that function that takes a, a vector of uh, numerical values and uh, and rescales them so that they add up to one Okay, which is what probability should be. Okay, and now these are uh, these looks these look like probability uh, uh, probabilities again. Um, and well, this says Marvin because I ran it on Marvin, but maybe we should run it on uh, on this new sample that we loaded. Okay, so let's let's just do that. Okay, let's run those things again. 
and it should say happy, right? All right, okay, so we see the top probability is class 24, so that's this one here, yes, 54%, okay, and, and using, my, uh, using my mapping from IDs to labels, I can map, you know, class uh, 24 to happy, okay, so pretty simple. All right, so now how about we deploy this on a real endpoint? And this is where we use the inference API. So uh, inference API is very, very simple. You build the URL uh, for your endpoint, and that's really this hugging face URL slash the name of the model on the hub, okay? You pass an authorization token, which is part of your account. Uh, when you, when you uh, create a hugging face account, you'll get a token, and that's what you pass here. And then you just send an HTTPS query, post query, to that endpoint, uh, loading, the, loading the data, right? So that's what we do here. Let's try that. Okay. So we just load that WAV file and, uh, and you know, we passed it just like that, okay? And again, the model will be loaded on demand, okay? So uh, the first time we hit it, it says, ah, come back later. You know, I'm still loading the model. Um, and, uh, and so if we try this, let's give it a few more seconds. Uh, if we try this again, uh, it should predict, okay? So you can use the Inference API like that for free. Um, if you want your models to stay loaded and, you know, uh, we, call them, we call that pinning, um, stay, you know, available 24 seven, you know, run on GPU and auto scale, et cetera, you need a paid plan. And, you know, you can find details on the website. So let's try this again. Yes, okay, and there you go. We see our prediction, 54%, happy, okay? So, you know, I've seen lots of different ways to deploy uh, machine learning models uh, in the last few years. Um, this one, I believe, is the simplest. Uh, there's nothing else, right? I, I did not, you know, sometimes people tell me, oh yeah, but you, you did create a server before, or, you know, you deployed a container, or, no, 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 I didn't do anything, okay? I just did this, you saw me, right? <laughs> I didn't cheat. <laughs> I did only hit this to load the model, and once the model was loaded, I could just query with it, okay? So, super nice. Okay, um, now imagine you wanted to uh, show this to, uh, to um, business stakeholders, right, or customers. And they, let's say they're not technical folks, and that's okay, you know? Uh, not everybody uh, needs to be technical. If you show them that, uh, of course, you know, they'll, they'll understand what you do here, uh, but it, it's, not what, it's not very easy to relate, right? You're showing them Jupyter notebooks and HTTP queries and, and Python code, so well, that's probably a little difficult. So instead, you know, what you can show them is this model running on spaces, okay? And this is what I've built here. Um, so let me, let me demo it first. And, uh, and this is public, by the way, so you can go and try it, okay? If you go at, uh, let me copy this in the chat, if you bear with me for a second. Okay, uh, you, can go and, you can go and try that um, for yourself. Yeah, it is, it is public, I think. Let me check. Yes, it is a public space. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so let's try it and then I'll explain how I build this. So uh, I should pick one of those keywords and, uh, and just try and predict. Uh, so let's, let's try that. Follow. Follow. Okay. All right, that worked. Let's try another one. Um, Sheila. All right, okay, you can try your own. <laughs> um, so now if you show them that, you know, now they understand what you're doing. It's, you know, it's not code anymore, it's, it's an app. And, uh, and, and I made it very simple and plain here, but you can make it look like, you know, your own application, you can add HTML, uh, you can make it look like uh, a proper web application, right? So uh, how much code is that? And how did I build it? So how much code is that? 
Okay, take a guess. All right. Well, of course, you could open the file and cheat, but take a, take an honest guess. Okay, I'll give you a few seconds. All right, here's the answer. Okay, this is as much code, okay? And you can see <laughs> most of it is the example. So what am I doing here? Uh, well, I'm using a framework called Radio, um, which is one of the two uh, frameworks you can use in Spaces. Uh, the other one is Trimlet. I'm importing the Transformers pipeline. I'm creating my classification pipeline. I'm creating a very simple interface. Okay, so I have an audio input from the microphone. I have a label, a prediction label output. And I put everything together in this interface. Okay, so the input, the output, and the, the function to call when I hit the, the uh, submit button. And this function simply predicts the audio file and returns a dictionary with the, the top uh, the top labels and the scores. Okay, that's it. That's all I did. Okay, and I did a few samples. So you could really say this is honestly, you know, I, 10, 12 lines of code. Nothing, nothing more than that. Uh, and you know, it's not going to be difficult to write. So you can actually write this code on your local machine. You can install Gradio on the local machine and, um, and, and you know, um, debug and everything. And once you're happy with your code, uh, all you have to do is create a new space on the, with the Hugging Face CLI. And, uh, and that creates a Git repository where you simply commit your files. And that's what you see here. Okay. And you can, you can do this in, in no time at all, right? Uh, spaces is really great. If you've been playing with the, the DALI Mini model, you know, that's what you've been using. And uh, of course, there are plenty, plenty of spaces to, to look at. Um, another interesting way to use spaces is uh, when, you, when you're browsing models, you'll see uh, spaces um, for that model, right? So uh, here, uh, we can see automatically that, you know, there is a space, uh, the, the one space that I built for this model, but it's the same for, uh, for all the other models out there. I don't know, let's grab, uh, yeah, see, you can, you can see those models. So this lets you see the model in action, uh, and this gives you example, you know, maybe use cases, you know, what is the model good for, and, and sample code to quickly get started, right? Because all these are public spaces, so you can actually see the code and, uh, and get to, uh, you know, and read it and, and reuse it, yeah? Okay, uh, so that's pretty nice. Uh, one last thing um, before we uh, conclude and, uh, and look at questions is um, how, you know, where would we go next? Um, we have a model, it's, it's accurate, um, we deployed it, um, and we could make it a little better, or at least we could experiment how it works uh, in the presence of uh, noisy or distorted samples, right? Because, you know, audio quality is not something you can, you can always guarantee. So here's an example it's, uh, of, of uh, how you could do that. Um, and I found this, uh, this really cool library. It's called Audio Mentations. So kudos to, to the author. It's, it's really nice. Um, and this lets you do uh, data augmentation on... Um, on audio samples, okay? So here's, a, here's how it works. So you just import uh, the library and, uh, and it has a bunch of transforms. Uh, so here I just uh, grabbed a, a few ones, okay? And, uh, and I'm loading my data set again. So here I, I'm just loading the validation data set, okay? And I'm building a, an augmentation uh, object with, uh, you know, I, I decide that, uh, uh, you know, um, the, 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 the process should pick three transforms out of those four and apply them, okay? So the first one is uh, shifting the pitch. Uh, so you can go, you know, uh, up or down in pitch. Uh, shifting, um, uh, sh uh, time shifting, okay? So shifting the, the sample on the time axis, uh, stretching it, right? So, uh, you know, delaying it, I guess and uh, masking it, so dropping 
part of the signal. So from let's say 5% to 25% of the signal. And there are, there are many more, okay? And then uh, again, using my uh, super nice map API, I could just apply this function to, uh, to my validation set, okay? And so now I have uh, a new data set that's been you know, modified and distorted in different ways. And again, we can explore some samples. So we can look at uh, the original sample and uh, the distorted sample and, and you know, display them. And you can see, yeah, that's <laughs> not quite the same thing anymore. Okay. And uh, we can listen to them. Bad. Bad. Uh, this one is kind of noisy already. The original one. Bad. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, this one sounds robotic. I hope you can hear it on the mic. So yeah, it's uh, it's not very nice. And if I predict uh, the clean sample, it says okay, bed, forty-eight, ninety-five percent, and the augmented sample does very well as well. It says forty-eight, ninety-three. Okay, well wow, that's that's really good because it does sound weird. Uh, maybe let's try another one. Okay. Bad. Bad. Oh, wow. This one's ugly. Okay. Bad. Okay. All right. That's never going to work. <laughs> Let's see. Interesting. Okay. So this is how, uh, this is how you could make your model more, you know, resilient. Just, uh, um, take the, take the, uh, the existing data. Oh yeah. See, okay. Now it's, it's completely confused. Okay. So, that's a really good one because bad. yeah even I mean even if you ask me to classify it I'm not sure I would say bad, bad. yeah yeah I would uh, you know like if the human ear cannot do a good job you know the model cannot do a good job probably so you would create those uh, you know adversarial samples or distorted samples and add them to the data set and uh, and you know that, that probably you would need to train your model a little longer because it would you know would need to work harder at figuring those out. Um, but generally, at the end, uh, in the end, you would have a, a better model. So um, so you know data augmentation is is a good technique. And again, this uh, audio augmentations library is uh, is a very interesting tool. Okay, well, so you can see there's uh, there's more work to be done, and uh, and hopefully you know you can uh, you can go and reuse the notebooks and and try that stuff out. So let me share a few resources uh, before we uh, go and and do questions. So if you um, if you want to get started, the first step, of course, is to uh, join our community, huggingface.co. You can sign up; takes just a few seconds. Um, then you should absolutely check out the tasks page, which, um, which our uh, developer relations team built to uh, introduce you to the different uh, machine learning tasks that you can uh, work on with transformers. And this is really, you know, plain English. So if you're curious what, you know, zero shot classification or summarization really means, uh, you can go and, uh, and, and read that stuff. It will put you on the right track and help you identify uh, business problems that, uh, that you can work on. Then you should uh, um, uh, take the Hugging Face course, um, which is again completely free. And um, again, it's, it's meant for developers. Um, it's not diving deep into models and, and science. It's very practical. You will run code on the first page there. And, uh, and you, know, you will quickly learn how to use the Transformers library, the datasets library. Very well done. Um, if you have questions, please go to the forums and ask all your questions there. Uh, don't be shy. There are no silly questions, especially if you're beginning with this. You know, uh, the, the whole team is there to help and uh, answer everything. And uh, from a business perspective, if your uh, company or your organization needs help, um, you know, with, you know, picking models or... Uh, training models or deploying models, you know, uh, we have a, um, an expert support program where we can put uh, you in touch uh, with uh, the, the, the appropriate people within Hugging Face and make sure you're successful with uh, Transformers. And if you have strong uh, privacy or security or compliance 
requirements and you cannot use a public hub. Um, we can also do private hub deployments. So those tools that you saw today, the hub, uh, the inference API, spaces, etc., we can deploy them on your own infrastructure, which, which could be on-prem or uh, in your uh, private cloud. Okay, so yeah, you can get in touch about that. And uh, if you want to stay in touch with me, uh, well, you can, of course, follow me on Twitter or, or take a look at my blog or my YouTube channel. Uh, I would uh, appreciate it if you, uh, if you <laughs> followed me and, you know, if you like my content, that's always nice. Uh, and, uh, you know, happy to connect on LinkedIn and, uh, and uh, help you out, you know, next week, next month, next year. Um, that's, uh, that's what I do. Okay. All right. Uh, so thanks very much. I hope this was useful. And uh, I think now we have time for questions. Yeah. So let's just, we have plenty of time to take all the questions, I guess. Let's right, take right. them one by one. Uh, so the most upvoted question that I can see right now is, uh, which format is audio data okay. and which can be used in neural networks? Okay, so uh, it, it's a good question, actually, because, um, what, you know, I think uh, tran originally transformers were used with natural language processing. And, uh, and, and it's reasonably easy to understand how we transform natural language into, uh, into numbers. Right, we use that tokenization process where each word in the vocabulary is replaced with an integer, and uh, and okay, now we have our sequ uh, a sequence right of integer numbers, and that's what the model works on. So, for um, for um, audio data, uh, the sequence. Uh, let me um, let me show that stuff again. If I can find my window, yeah, here it is. Okay. Okay, so yeah, the, the, this one here, yes. So the sequence really comes from, uh, you know, digitizing the audio. So in this case, we have one second uh, at 16 kilohertz. So we have 16,000, uh, you know, floating point numbers, right? And, and this is the sequence that we built, okay? So All right. in this, okay, so that's, basically how this works uh and again you, you 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 need to understand what the model was trained on okay so here that model was trained on wave audio okay at 16 kilohertz okay so it's just a wave file digitized at 16 kilohertz and uh, that's what you need to use for your uh for your samples if you use a different file format or if you use uh i don't know if you use flac audio or if you use uh uh, you know, 32K uh, resolution, you know, it's not going to work. So you need to match what the model has been trained on. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, another question is, what are the applications of audio classification? So audio classification could be, so here I'm using very short keywords. Um, but you could do, um, you know, you could do sentiment analysis, right? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. we, and we, we saw that in, uh, in uh, one of the early tests that I, that I did. Uh, so you could classify longer, longer sentences. Uh, you could say, you know, this is a happy customer. And this is typically used for, uh, um, you know, uh, voice of the customer applications. Um, you could in real time detect, uh, you know, in the speech that, oh, this person's not happy, this person's angry. Uh, so that's that's one use case. Another uh, example is picking up, if you want to look at keywords, is picking up particular words that have been said in, in the audio. Uh, you know, maybe product names or, uh, or, you know, what is this person calling about, right? Uh, you know, I have a problem with my uh, uh, gaming console, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if you pick up, you know, if you pick up that stuff immediately, you know, you could show screen, so show stuff on the screen that the, the support representative can use. Um, and in the case of keywords here specifically, uh, like I said, you know, uh, uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon Echo, uh, uh, you know, Google stuff, uh, car, uh, uh, car uh, navigation systems. Anytime, you know, you want to understand very specific commands, uh, you could use an application like that. You know, you could you could drive a robot with this. Okay, you you know, if you're a, I don't know, if you're a surgeon or a mechanic and your hands are busy and you want to use your voice to give specific commands to a robot, 
Um, yeah. That's another application. So there are plenty of applications for audio classification, actually. All right. Uh, so can we use audio classification for non-human voices? Um, yes. I mean, um, actually, that's that's a very good question. That's, that would be an interesting way to generate data. Um, you know, you could use... Uh, you could use text-to-speech systems <laughs> to generate those samples. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, you would need different voices. So, you know, I worked for Amazon. So, you know, uh, you, uh, you have to excuse me for uh, mentioning Amazon all the time, but that's what I know best. Uh, Amazon has this uh, text-to-speech service called Amazon Polly, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can generate text. Uh, you can do text-to-speech. and. They have, let's say, uh, 10 or 12 different English voices. So very simply, very quickly, you could generate uh, uh, a first data set like, like that. Okay? And these are human-sounding, uh, human-like voices. They sound very, very good, I think. Um, so that could be an easy way to add more uh, different voices to your data. But generally, yeah, text-to-speech would be a way to generate that. But you need... Uh, you know, you need real, real people too, right? You need men and women and children and, uh, you know, young people and elder, elderly people. Uh, you need uh, all kinds of accents. You need the, the French accent, the Indian accent, the Spanish accent, <laughs> if you want to pick up, you know, all the, all the variants out there. So, yeah, but um, there, are, right. there are many, many ways, yeah, you could do that. All right. Uh, what major advantages transformer have as compared to LSTM? Okay, that's a good question. So first, uh, transformers are really better at understanding long-term context. Um, uh, so if you have very long sequences, which we have here, like thousands and thousands of tokens, okay, which could be audio, which could be uh, a very long paragraph that you want to summarize or translate. Uh, transformers understand that, that context, the, you know, the left to right and the right to left uh, context much better. So that's, that's one thing. Uh, they also train faster than LSTMs. You know, LSTMs are, have, have a very complex structure and training mm -hmm. is, is, is long and costly. Transformers are better there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the last thing is transformers work very, very well with transfer learning. Okay, so you can pre-train those models as we saw here and just fine-tune them um, on, on, a, on a smaller data set and get good results. So generally, yes, uh, you know, LSTMs are still on the radar, mm -hmm. but uh, transformers, I think, are, are taking over. Okay, so can we use transformers for object detection? Absolutely, yes. Um, that's a good question. We can take a look. So if we go to the hub um, and we look at the computer vision test types, object detection. Uh, yep, we have, you know, oh, another Facebook model. So uh, do we have examples here? Yes. Okay. All right. Lionel Messi, PSG. Okay, I promise I didn't do this. <laughs> All right. Promise I didn't do this on purpose, uh, but there you go. So um, this one is uh, is the uh, is is the the Facebook model, uh, but you know I, I'm I'm showing too many Facebook models. I want to show other ones, uh, but yeah, there there are other models out there. Okay, but this one this one is very very good. So yeah, you can you can do all those different things. Just go and explore the hub. All right, uh, so. What are the types of audio classification? Are there any types? Um, no, I think generally the, the, the two applications that I, uh, that I see you know, working, working with customers is really either classifying sentences, uh, you know, like I said, emotion detection, and you know, that's what we see here. Uh, you know, um, we see, uh, if we look at those uh, pre-trained models, you know, we have we have mostly motion detection, and yeah, we have different languages also, by the way, um, and um, and keywords, right? I think it's it's mostly what people are going to work with, either specific commands, or or classifying, you know, sentences, uh, speech, right, directly, uh, just like you would classify uh, sentences, text sentences. Okay, 
so i can see a question here what are transformers please explain okay so uh, it, it goes beyond the, the scope of uh, of this but if you uh, so there are plenty of uh, there are plenty of uh, introductions out there um, if you want the research paper this is the one right the original one let me put this put this in the chat um, but transformers is are, are based on um, on uh, a technical attention and attention is basically uh, is basically what I what I ex quickly explain the ability to look at uh, you know uh, uh, left hand side content and right hand side content and understand you know how to best predict a particular word and and of course this started with NLP but it's been generalized to I would say any data that you can describe as a sequence okay so if you want the research paper this is the one you, you want to read and uh, and if you want a, a friendlier introduction there is mm -hmm. some contacts in the transformer course on, on hugging face but you'll find uh, you'll find plenty of uh, of you know I would say entry level blog posts on uh, on Medium and uh, and analytics video and everywhere else. <laughs> this has been yeah. described many times. All right. Uh, so uh, here's a question: uh, What is l language modeling? Okay. So language modeling means, uh, and it's it's the foundational. Uh, uh, the foundational step, right? Because if you want to say, uh, you know, for example, if you want to do, let's find, uh, let's find, uh, yeah, I'll just take the, the, I'll just take one of my models. Uh, yeah, this one here. Okay. And this is the, the webinar uh, we did with analytics video just this week, right? So. Uh, if you're interested in, uh, in in text classification, you can find this one as well. Uh, so let's if I here's a, a classification model for shoe reviews, right? So if I'm gonna say something like that, okay, and I want to classify this, and this tells me okay, it's a five star review, sixty seven percent, okay. Um, how does the model know that you know uh, that I, I am talking about shoes first of all, and how does it know what nice really means, and what, how does it know what all the time means? So we know, right, because we learn that the language. But how do you teach the language to a model? Okay, and that's what language modeling is. So you take uh, a huge corpus of data, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and we can look at, uh, I don't know, let's grab BERT, okay? So the BERT model, for example. Okay, so you take a huge corpus of data, again, you know, Wikipedia uh, size and, 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 and other, other models, and you just train it to do this. You train it for um, uh, what's called mask, mask language modeling. So this is the input, right? Uh, the input will be Paris is the capital of France, obviously. And you randomly mask tokens in the text, okay? Um, so that the model learns that, uh, that the concept that comes here should be capital, okay? So that's what language modeling means. You, you take those huge corpuses of text, you mask randomly some words, and you teach the model to predict the word that should fill the mask. And by doing that, the model will understand the, 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 the relationships and the concepts between mm -hmm. the different words in that vocabulary. Okay. And then you can use this model for downstream tasks. Okay. You take that bird model and you use it for uh, text classification or you use it for uh, um, I don't know, uh, summarization or, or et cetera, et cetera, okay? Uh, because it has been trained on, you know, tons of data and it has learned that when you say Paris is the mm, of France, it should be capital, right? It understands, that's the magic of those models. They understand the relationships 
between the different concepts in the in the corpus okay so all right uh we have a question uh, saying like which format of data is good for deep learning models will the type of format affects the model um, so generally the format, I would say the format of the data does not matter. Uh, if you wanted to train, um, let's say uh, a sentiment analysis model, you know, the, uh, the, the data could come, um, the data could come from, uh, yeah, we could take maybe this one here. Uh, the data could come from anywhere. It could be stored any, in any way. Um, the only thing that matters is when you when you train the model or when you predict with the model, it expects um, uh, features um, that have a certain format uh, and a certain name. So, um, uh, so for example, that uh, speech model that I use, you know, it expects uh, an input uh, input audio in 16 k resolution and a class label. Okay. Uh, if you're uh, if you're doing text classification, it's going to expect um, a feature called uh, probably you know text text with the actual text and uh, a label as well. So um, you need to match uh, the, the feature names and the feature types. But generally, you know the data comes from anywhere, and uh, and it's it's not important how the data is stored. It just what matters is passing the right type and, and, and the right feature names to the model for training and inference. All right. So I think we have answered almost all questions. Just taking up one last question. Sure. Uh, so what is the difference between active learning and transfer learning? OK, so transfer learning is, um, is a two-step thing. OK, transfer learning is I have a pre-trained model. Okay, uh, and I fine tune it on a little bit of data. Uh, I, I run a second uh, training process, a much shorter, much uh, smaller training process, and then I use the model and I and I predict with it. Okay, um, active learning is an ongoing process. Okay, and active learning is a model that trains um, uh, as as it goes. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, so that's that's different uh, for for transformers here. We do, uh, we do fine tuning. Okay, we do fine tuning. All right. So I think that that is it. We can conclude the session now. We have all answered all right. almost all the questions. Sure. Uh, so Good. thanks a lot, Julian, for a wonderful session. Well, okay. I was Thank you very much. To... Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks everybody. Have a good day. You too. Uh, for all the attendees, there's an announcement. Please join the main stage. We are having a power talk on riding the flywheel of recommender system by Devdoot Mukherjee, starting right at uh, 2.30 p.m. IST. So please go to the main stage. Thanks. <laughs>